Welcome to If Numbers Could Talk. My name is Keelan. If Numbers Could Talk is a part of the Thinkering Group. You can find us over at thinkering.space. You can also find at Thinkering Space the Thinkering Talks podcast, the ExoFathom podcast, along with the Plank Talks with Joe. When you get a chance, please check out our merchandise. We have merchandise on our website, thinkering.space, as well as merchandise at teespring.com slash thinkering shop. Please visit, grab a t-shirt, grab a mug. We'll appreciate it. And when you do, feel free to let us know that you've decided to become a member of any of our fan clubs. If numbers could talk. We'll be having an episode today that is commemorating the NBA, but also commemorating the NBA, I mean, excuse me, the Christmas season. So the NBA Christmas Day games. What we'll be covering isn't per se player by player statistics. We won't necessarily be worried about who did the best, who did the worst, who, uh, uh, (laughs) <laughs> who simply didn't show up. But what we will be concerned about is what what did happen? What um, were the surprises? What were the history marks, the records that were set? And have a little fun while we're at it. Welcome to If Numbers Could Talk. My name is Keelan. Glad to have you. So today's episode, as I began is about the NBA Christmas Day episodes. And I'm going to go straight into it for you today. So ever since 1947, which is the second year of the NBA, the NBA has had Christmas Day games, five exact Christmas Day games altogether. And the only time there was not an NBA Christmas Day game was the 1998 NBA lockout. Now, usually for these NBA uh, Christmas Day games, for those who are watching, here you go. Sorry about that. For these NBA Christmas Day games, there's usually about 10 teams. There's uh, finals rematches, rivalry matchups. Uh, Sometimes it's just the the two hottest teams at the time. Very rarely will you get a hot team and a team that's gone cold and let's say a a guy gets injured. And um, to my recollection, there's even been a few times where there were injured players and that game may have gotten switched out. Um, I couldn't find that. I looked for it and I couldn't find any proof of that. But I remember that to some extent happening in the past. Or, you know, could be Mandela's effect. We know how that goes. Now. We all know for sure that when you get to these Christmas Day games, these are your big games. You know, these are your biggest games for fanship. Um, A couple of quick, quick records or quick notables. Kobe Bryant has played the most Christmas Day games with 16. So he leads all time players with the most Christmas Day games played, which Christmas Day is also the most played on day by Kobe Bryant in his career. There is no other single day. In on the calendar, excuse me, no other single day of 365. So of the other 364, Christmas Day remains the number one day Kobe Bryant played basketball on. Uh, Phil Jackson and Jack, Dr. Phil Jackson, the Dr. Jack Ramsey are tied for 11 um, wins as a coach. All right. And wins on Christmas Day as a coach. Doc Rivers and Phil Jackson both appeared in the Christmas Day games as a player and a coach. And Phil Jackson has participated in 20 Christmas Day games altogether between being a player and being a coach. A total of 20 holiday games for Phil Jackson. I thought that was pretty, pretty impressive. I That is incredible when you think of you put together 20 games. For, for 20 Christmas Day games, that's one one game a year, right? So that's 20 years, like Kobe, 16 years, he was a part of the Christmas Day games. And when you realize, like, it's not like the NFL, right? In the NFL, the games are pretty much set. You know 
you know, your top teams are going to play. And it's not, I'm sorry, your rivalry teams are going to play. Your teams that from one conference team, this conference team, they're going to match up. Um, in basketball, it's not that way. You will, pro- you can possibly see a different team every year if the power struggle or if the power rankings were to tilt, but they don't tilt any in any major way from what I am aware of to where you're going to see a vast different roster of teams every single Christmas. So you might get two, three years of a Laker team, two, three years of a Miami team, um, two, three years of a Warriors team, those kind of things. But I have not seen it in my time, at least, where there is not at least one or two teams that are repetitively on Christmas, uh, playing on Christmas Day. Sometimes there's even teams that, in my opinion, I'm like, wait, why is this team on there? And you go and look at their records. Um, I'll be honest. Usually it's the Washington Wizards. <laughs> but um, you'll go and look at their um, year record and you're like, this doesn't make sense. But then they have a really good game on Christmas Day. So uh, I'm, I assume they know what they're doing in the front offices when they're making those schedules. However, occasionally or excuse me, however, it is most likely you're going to have your top teams. And occasionally we do end up having those those teams that we're not quite sure who put who was OK with this, who said they wanted to see this game nationally televised. However, I digress quite a bit. Most teams uh, for Christmas Day, they have special uniforms, special sneakers. There's been socks. Um, there's been times where the NBA has special themed patches. The NBA logo had a snowflake on it at one point. Uh, you have your city and statement uniform jerseys or uniform jerseys, excuse me, your unit and statement uniforms. Um, those were, I can't remember which year that was, but those were also considered uh, Christmas Day uniforms. And this is one that I wasn't quite aware of because I don't. I never, I didn't hear about this and I didn't see them, but when I looked it up and I saw the information, this was definitely what happened. There were also a pair or there are also some jerseys that are called the earned jerseys, the earned jerseys. So those aren't your city jerseys. Those those aren't like your cream cities and your rip city and all of that. Those are um, your earned jerseys. Like I want to say the Miami vice jerseys would fall under that. And, um, or excuse me, Miami vice, the vice city jerseys. But it's weird to me because they say the earned jerseys are jerseys, uniforms that were earned by teams that made it to the 2018 playoffs. I I promise there's a few teams that have those uniforms that did not make the playoffs. Or maybe they did and they were just swept out early or pushed out early. And I don't remember them having participation (laughs) points, if if that counts, you know. However, um, as we see throughout Christmas, there's been a various amounts of creativity that has been implemented by the NBA and allowed to be implemented by the players on Christmas day as a special event. So much. So you've even had two teams, the Lakers and the Celtics um, had themed shoes, themed sneakers where eat the players, certain players on each team were wearing the same color shoes, same laces. You get me. Um, and I just think that's cool. You know, when you if you follow the NBA and you're aware that in the early 2000s, there was a big shift or the late 90s, however you want to look at that. There was a big shift in how the players were allowed to dress when it came to um, office time, as you would call it. You know, they were walking into the arenas and or at NBA, any NBA sponsored event. So just knowing that they were able to have some level of creativity and uniqueness and sense of style, so to say. Uh, for Christmas, without hesitation, I, I appreciate. I appreciate learning that information. <clears throat> now, let's get to where it starts to get interesting, right? In 2011, Christmas Day games were the season opener. That was the season opener due to a lockout at that time, um, where or a strike you could call it. The season just didn't start until Christmas Day. In 2004 was the very first time we saw Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant face off against each other in an NBA game. And from there, we move into our Christmas Day rivalries. Of course, Kobe and Shaq became a Christmas Day rivalry. I want to say we saw them play each other in three 
Christmas Day games. I want uh, two Christmas Day games. However, here's the part that got me. Kobe and Shaq became a rivalry. But as many games as Kobe played, LeBron never became a rivalry. Not on Christmas Day, at least. So Christmas Day rivalries, we have the Bulls and Pistons rivalry. The Bulls and Knicks rivalry. The Cavalier and Warrior rivalry. Recent rivalry, of course. The Lakers and Celtics rivalry. The Lakers and Spurs rivalry. The Lakers and Clippers rivalry. The Suns and Spurs rivalry. The Knicks and Pacers rivalry. And there may be two, maybe three rivalries I'm missing, a couple of face-offs, head-to-heads. However, as you see, Christmas Day is almost like a mini playoff. It's like a one-day playoff. If you make, if you have a Christmas Day game, you are almost inevitably a playoff-bound team at that point. At, at that point of the league, or excuse me, that point of the season, which would be right around halfway, right as we're getting halfway through the season. So you you hear all the rivalries. You're aware of all of the players that have played. You're aware of your favorite player if you were to watch them have played, but. Are you aware of records? Are you aware of what your team looks like when it comes to a Christmas Day game? If your team was to be to be slated this year, 2020, to play in Christmas Day game, mind you, the NBA season starts today on December 22nd because of the coronavirus and the way 2020 has been set up, the NBA bubble. The NBA is starting today, December 22nd. Christmas is in three days. The Christmas Day games are right upon us. And these are high energy games. So what does your team look like? What is your, how does your team fare? In fact, how does any team fare? Well, it seems home teams seem to have the advantage. Home teams are 142 with 75 losses, 142 wins and 75 losses for a total of 65%. So it is a 65% of victory for the home team on a Christmas Day game. If you ask me, that's because you have fans who are in the arena on Christmas Day. If you are taking the same energy you would have had with your family or that you did have the morning with your family, and you're taking it into that arena and you're pushing it out for your team, I would expect that energy and that amount of uh, love, that amount of love to be able to be conveyed and utilized by your team to harness the energy to get a victory for you in front of their home crowd, right? And when you think about just, (laughs) you have home teams, you have away teams. And what we're aware of is the NBA has Christmas day games. The NBA has always had Christmas day games. But there has there is no NBA Christmas Eve games. There are no Christmas Eve games. The NBA does reserve Christmas Eve for the players to be with their families. Now, I'm not sure exactly how likely that is um, for guys who are scheduled to play on Christmas Day, unless you're the home team. And even then, I'm not sure exactly how that works out for you because you're not able to, you know, really eat or or not eat but eat certain things and pig out everybody doesn't have the same diet some guys can only eat a certain thing moving into games and during season so i don't want to make it seem as if these guys still get a normal holiday like anyone else that is not the case but the nba has stated that they do put aside time for their guys to spend time with their family on Christmas Eve. But the amount of energy that is put out by the fans on Christmas Day, to me, explains the 65% win uh, rate for home teams on Christmas Day. Christmas Day. Going to keep saying it. Now, keeping in mind that the first national, the first nationally televised Christmas Day game was in 1967, The channels and the stations that we are familiar with now that broadcast those stations or those games, now we have uh, your ESPN, 
ABC. Uh, they do simulcasts. Uh, I know mostly for Laker games. I'm not sure if it's for every game. Um, and I'm only not sure if it's for every game because I live in California. So we are automatically getting Laker and Warrior games. Um, it just is what it is. However, I am not aware if, you know, the Sixer and Celtic game is also on simulcast. It, it may be on the East Coast. I'm not sure if it is out here, but I know for sure we can catch it on, say, ESPN. Also, keep in mind that there was a time where you could catch the Christmas Day games on pr your local stations, your uh, CBS, ABC, NBC, and then that changed over time. But it wasn't until 1983 that be it became steady, and as of recent, the recent years, uh, I believe it's 2018, 2019, and this year included, we will have a simulcast where ABC and ESPN will be broadcasting specific games at the exact same time. Next, we'll move into the NBA Christmas Day team records. Team records. What what did your team look like? I was I asked a minute ago, what did your team look like? Is your team likely to win? Is your team likely to lose? And as we saw, home teams are more likely to win. So I'm just going to go through every NBA team really quick with their records. I'm not going to go through percentage this time, but win-loss, win-loss records, that's all. The Atlanta Hawks, they are 9-11 and 11 on Christmas Day. Boston Celtics are 15-18 and 18 on Christmas Day. The Nets are 4-5. and five. The Hornets have never played a Christmas Day game. The Bulls are 13-7 and seven on Christmas Day. The Cavaliers are are seven and seven on Christmas day. The Mavericks are two and one. The Nuggets are one and five. The Pistons are 10 and 22. Golden State Warriors, 13 with 16 losses. Houston Rockets, six wins, six losses. Indiana Pacers are two and two on Christmas day. The Los Angeles Clippers are seven and eight on Christmas Day. The Los Angeles Lakers break even at 23 wins and 23 losses. 50, 50, 500 for the Los Angeles Lakers. The Grizzlies have never played a Christmas Day game. The Miami Heat are 10 and 2 on Christmas Day. They have only lost two Christmas Day games. The Milwaukee Bucks are three and three on Christmas Day. Timberwolves, one and one on Christmas Day. Pelicans, one and two. The New York Knickerbockers are 20 and 31 on Christmas Day. I apologize. The New York Knickerbockers are 22 and 31 on Christmas Day. Thunder, six and 14 on Christmas Day. Orlando Magic are 5 and 4. 76ers are 18 and 14 on Christmas Day. The Phoenix Suns are 12 and 6, which is pretty impressive on Christmas Day. Portland Trail Blazers are 14 and 4. Sacramento Kings 18 and 11. San Antonio Spurs are 4 and 6. The Toronto Raptors are 0-2. Port Portland Jazz, excuse me. The Utah Jazz are 5-2, while the Washington Wizards, as I said earlier, a little impressed. They play a lot of Christmas Day games. The Washington Wizards are 16-7 on Christmas Day. Keeping in mind, the Washington Wizards haven't exactly been a top-tier team um, as far as deep runs in the playoffs, but they have made the first round quite often. To see that in Chris, on Christmas Day, they are 16 and 7. And this is a team that plays very, 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 very frequently on Christmas Day. And then you also have, as far as win loss impressiveness, you also have the Miami Heat, who are 10 and 2. The Miami Heat are 10 and 2. All 10 of those wins are by Dwayne Wade or with Dwayne Wade. But those were my two most, I was most impressed by those two. Not that impressed by the Lakers in the 23 and 23, although it's interesting that they are 23 and 23 for Christmas. And they, of course, will be playing 
this coming Christmas, um, NBA Christmas Day. Now, from team records, let's talk about Christmas Day game records. Whether we're talking about averages for Christmas Day, total points on all Christmas days that this person played in, or the maximum amount of points, rebounds, assists, dished out, or uh, uh, attrib attributed to a player on a Christmas Day game. That is what we are going to cover now. The most points in a single Christmas Day game was by was 60 points, which was scored by Bernard Parks. <laughs> you guys have to really excuse me this, this evening. I apologize. The most points scored in a Christmas Day NBA game was by Bernard King. Bernard King, 60 points in 1984. The most career Christmas points altogether, it, that record is held by Kobe Bryant, who has scored 395 Christmas Day points. LeBron James is only 74 Christmas Day points behind Kobe Bryant and will be playing this Christmas Day. For the points per game for on a Christmas Day, I listed the number one player for the most points per game on a Christmas Day. And the number one, the player who had the most played games on a Christmas Day, but also was on the top 10 average points on a Christmas Day list. So we have Tracy McGrady, who played a total of three Christmas Day games, but averaged 43.3 NBA points on Christmas Day. Now, What's interesting is one of those Christmas Day games, I remember Tracy McGrady was listed as injured and he came out and played. Um, and I think he dropped 40 that night. And I'm not sure if it was the same Christmas, but there was also a Christmas. No, actually, that was the exact same game um, in the same year that Grant Hill was also on the team. And Grant Hill had a very mediocre night. They were both dealing with injuries at that time. But I remember at least two of Tracy McGrady's um, Christmas Day games. And yeah, I, I'm pretty sure he averaged 43.3 because he dropped 40 pretty much any time he played a Christmas Day game. But the player who played the most and averaged the most impressive amount in a Christmas Day game is one Oscar Robertson, who played 12 NBA Christmas Day games and averaged 31.4 points on an NBA Christmas Day. The most single game rebounds on an NBA Christmas Day was by Wilt Chamberlain. In 1961, Wilt Chamberlain grabbed 36 rebounds on Christmas Day. The player that has the most rebounds on Christmas Day total playing eight games was Bill Russell with 176 Christmas Day rebounds. Wilt Chamberlain, however, has the career rebound average high for the NBA Christmas Day games at 25.3 rebounds for Wilt Chamberlain. Now for assists, assists, I was actually, again, impressed. Most of the, these guys aren't modern. The uh, assist leaders for Christmas Day games is not your modern guys. One, the second part was the lowest and the top I believe say it was eight was 16 and number three through eight was Oscar Robertson. <laughs> so, um, oh, and tiny Archibald was mixed in there as well. So we have the most assists dished in a Christmas day game tied at 18. We have tiny Archibald and guy Rogers. Right behind them, we have at 17 and 16, and mixed in at 16 as well, Tiny Archibald with Oscar Robertson. So Oscar Robertson had about six of the top 10 slots. Um, Tiny Archibald had three, and Guy Rogers had one. The career assist high, who has the most assist in NBA Christmas Day? history. 
Well, of course, if you listened just a minute ago, that would have to be one Oscar Robertson, who has 145 Christmas Day assists. The closest two behind him are Kobe Bryant with 85 and LeBron James with 82 Christmas Day assists. Christmas Day assist per game, Oscar Robertson had 12.1 for every game. But in the modern day, the number one guy on the list for assists per game on a Christmas day is John Wall with 12.5 assists on a Christmas day for average. Now, when it comes to the other stats, steals and blocks specifically, there wasn't really an average to be found or an, high, or an accumulative number um, from what I was looking up. I did try to find them. They weren't as simple to find as the others. But I'll give you the numbers on who has the record. The still record was set in 2016 and is currently held by Kyrie Irving with seven steals on an NBA Christmas Day. The NBA Christmas Day block record was set in 2011 by DeAndre Jordan with eight Christmas Day blocks. The most wins, the most wins was set by a guy who played 13 NBA Christmas Day games. He has 10 NBA Christmas Day victories, and his name is Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade has the most NBA Christmas Day wins with 10 NBA Christmas Day wins of his 13 games played. The player that has the most losses in NBA Christmas Day history also has played the most games in NBA Christmas Day history. He has played 16 NBA Christmas Day games and lost 10 of 16 NBA Christmas Day games. That player is Kobe Bean Bryant. Kobe Bryant has lost 10 NBA Christmas Day games. Now, once we get past all of that, we know who our top players are when it comes to points, who our top assist players are. We know where our record, our rivalries came from. We know, you know, we have a good understanding of what to expect on a Christmas, for a Christmas Day game, for a Christmas Day lineup. It's an all day event. It's an all day event. The guys are playing from, from uh, sunrise to sunset, so to speak. Not exactly, but definitely beyond sunset. But something I also wanted to run by you or run for you. I wanted to ensure that this message, these, this information got out there. And again, excuse me this evening for my stuttering. The best games in, on NBA Christmas Day vary. They are ranked across the board at 12 games and 10 games and your top five games and the best game of all time on Christmas Day. So what I did is I took the time to remember games that I've seen and at the same time, do a little research on games that I wasn't around for. So I have here, what did I do? Three games that I thought were just incredible games. And one is my number one. And I believe the number one game, not only for ratings, but also for fanfare as far as NBA Christmas Day games go. So coming in. And again, the first two are not in any particular order, but the very last one is my number one. You have the New York Knicks versus the New Jersey Nets. This is the older game that I was not around for. However, I did a little bit of history. And without knowing it, I chose the game that Bernard King set the career high uh, or the Christmas Day career high of 60 points, which was also the first time anyone had set or excuse me, the first time anyone had scored 60 points in Madison Square Garden. Bernard King was also facing his ex-teammate or his ex-team, which was the New Jersey Nets at the time. And he had no backup. It was really just Bernard King. You go look at the stats. It was just Bernard King. And they still lost that game. They lost that game 120 to 114. But Bernard King that night set the record for that lasted for 25 years. The most points scored in Madison Square Garden at 60 points which was Bernard King, the most points scored still to this day on a Christmas day, 60 points, Bernard King. So the very first game, notable game that I would say if you were to go back and look up some NBA Christmas Day games 
to give you a good feel of what this is about. 1984, New York Knicks versus the New Jersey Nets, the night Bernard King dropped 60 points. The next one I would say personally is the 2013 Lakers versus Heat game. The Miami Heat did win that game 101 to 95. And but the the hype behind the game, the energy behind the game, it was an amazing game. It was a great game to watch. Um and it wasn't so much as the Lakers loss. And I didn't go with some of the first games between the Lakers and the Heat, um, like the 2010 Laker and Heat game, where, I mean, the way history looks, it almost is, is that was when that Miami team had arrived. It, that was the night that they said, hey, we're here. But in 2013, they were coming off of their back-to-back. Um, the Lakers were still going hard with Adam, you know, still coming from full force, full-fledged. And um, it was just a fight tooth and nail. It was a fight tooth and nail. And at the end of it all, don't get me misunderstood. I don't think there was any inkling in even Laker fans' minds that Miami was um, proving a point, that they were making a statement. But we made a statement as well that night, the Lakers did. Uh, They made a statement that night as well. And the statement they made that night was, we won't back down and we don't care if you have a back-to-back. We've been there. And that takes me... Back to 2004, my number one selection for a Christmas Day NBA game, NBA Christmas Day games. My number one game, Lakers versus Heat, 2004, the very first Kobe versus Shaq showdown. And that's what this was. This was the Kobe versus Shaq showdown. Um, You know, you could call it the Lakers versus Heat, but it was Kobe versus Shaq. Now, the Miami Heat won this game 104 to 102, and the game was hyped from the beginning. Um, I know in the first couple of possessions, Kobe tried to dunk on Shaq. (laughs) In the first couple of possessions, Kobe tried to dunk on Shaq. And, um, of course, I say try to. He was unsuccessful. And, you know, it was a great game. They went to overtime. Kobe was iced out that overtime. Um, And I still, this was still one of the most amazing games for uh, uh, my, you know, and me growing up. I was in high school by this time, of course, but still just coming up. And um, you never, you never thought you would see Kobe and Shaq face off. And then when you did see Kobe and Shaq face off, in in my opinion, I was scared. Like you didn't know what was going to happen. My heart was racing. The emotions were everywhere. Uh, You almost thought a fight was going to break out. And this was 2004. So Malice at the Palace, you know, the NBA was aware that it, this could happen. And um, what ends up happening is the Lakers and the Heat face off. They get all the way down to it. They go to overtime. Kobe Bryant scores zero points in overtime. He is iced out and he misses the game winner. And I didn't feel like the Lakers lost that game and I didn't feel like the Heat won that game. I feel like the fans won that game. That was such an amazing game to watch. And again, I implore you that these three games I mentioned are my notables for Christmas Day, uh, NBA Christmas Day games, my notables. Um, The 2004 Laker game versus the Heat, again, is my number one. I implore you to go and research, look up those games. Um, They are all on YouTube for you to go and view for your pleasure. And I feel you will enjoy them. It will give you a good understanding on what the NBA Christmas Day is about. And if you are to come across this, not during the holiday season, when Christmas has passed, doesn't hurt to still go look at the games. They're still there. You know, maybe maybe look at the most recent Christmas Day lineup for uh, the year that passed for you. And with that, we have reached the end of the NBA Christmas Day special just to see how history has went, how it's panned out, what the buildup is like. This year, they're going to have some really cool games on. uh, And again, with everything going on in 2020, I think this will be one of those years where we enjoy the games on a different level and in a different way. I always ask the same and I will continue to do the same. 
Please take care of yourself, take care of those around you, and continue to love yourself and those around you. When you get a chance, head over to my YouTube, hit that subscribe button if you like, visit our Facebook, hit that like and follow button, and also over on Instagram, hit that like and follow button. You can find merchandise over at thinkering.space. You can also visit our merch site at teesprings.com slash thinkering shops. And when you get the chance, while you're at it, drop us a line, drop us a comment. Let us know how you feel about our websites, about any of our pages or any of our content. Give us some feedback. Tell us some things that you like, some things you don't like, and some things you would love to hear. I appreciate you. Have a good one and enjoy your weeks.